This is an EEG of a 47-year-old woman. Unfortunately, we don't have a history on her because the primary team did not give us any, which tends to happen from time to time. So if we look at our montage, we can see that we have left and right parasagittal chains over the left and right temporal. And the first thing we want to do, as usual, is to assess the posterior dominant rhythm. So if we look, now it looks like the patient's blinking, so we're not getting a very good idea of the posterior dominant rhythm. I'm just backing up here. In the beginning, it looks like the patient's eyes are closed here. We see um, this is one second, and it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half hertz here on the left. And on the right side, it looks like we have um, slower waves intermixed in the posterior dominant rhythm. We see some delta activity here. And so it's a mix of theta activity and delta activity. So I mentioned that the posterior dominant rhythm frequency was about seven and a half hertz on the left, and it's slower on the right if we count. One, two, three, four, five, about six hertz. So we have an asymmetry in terms of the frequency. The background, um, it does appear to be reactive. And we do see a good frequency amplitude gradient if you look from the front to the back. It looks like the um, amplitudes are a little bit higher here over the right side compared to the left. And we do need to look at this in a referential montage to make sure that that is not a subtraction effect from the bipolar montage. And if we look here, um, we can directly compare the amplitudes of O1 to O2. And it looks like there isn't a 50% difference, so we would not say that there is an asymmetry in terms of the amplitudes. So let's go back to our longitudinal bipolar montage and keep looking. There are a lot of jerky eye movements here back and forth. We can see this. It's similar to what we see in REM sleep. And the patient is hyperventilating now. So we're going to look for any slow waves that we can see with hyperventilation or any epileptiform activity, which we wouldn't expect to see in someone of this age. Usually epileptiform activity brought about by hyperventilation is in primary generalized epilepsy and specifically in absence, and we see that more in children. Now there's a lot of artifact here. This is, looks like muscle EMG artifact. It's very sharp and pointy looking. And on this page, it's really um, nice to appreciate the asymmetry between the hemispheres. Over the right hemisphere, we see this delta activity. We're not seeing it here on the right, or, I'm sorry, on the left. The left, we're just seeing this theta activity. So we do have focal slowing over the right hemisphere, specifically in the right posterior quadrant, because we see it in these posterior electrodes, the temporo-occipital and the parieto-occipital, maybe a little bit centro-parietal as well. And there's some movement there noted by the tech. And as we progress on, we're looking for drowsiness and we're looking for sleep stages and for any other focal abnormalities. So far, the patient's awake here. We haven't seen any evidence of, of sleep. Um, maybe a little drowsy here and there. We see some loss of the anterior posterior gradient. But overall, looks pretty... Um, monotonous here. There's a little bit of slowing here in the right um, temporal chains here. That's We call that sharply contoured. It's a slowing with a bit of a phase reversal there. That's not epileptiform, but it definitely makes you keep your eye on that region to see if anything more clear-cut will pop up. So, so far we just see that focal slowing. And the other abnormality is that the background overall is slow because even on the left side, it's about seven and a half hertz and that's, that's not normal. In adults, it should be eight and a half hertz or faster. So here's the photic stimulation and we see the flash here, five hertz, and there's no driving response. That's not abnormal. Some people just don't have driving. 
So we don't see any abnormal responses to the flash, like a photoparoxysmal response. And there the patient's eyes opened and closed, and we can see that reactivity, the background attenuates here, and then we see the background coming back out, more blinks, and that's the end. So this is an abnormal EEG due to the presence of, number one, mild diffuse background slowing, which is a nonspecific finding suggestive of diffuse neuronal dysfunction, and number two, superimposed focal slowing over the right posterior quadrant. These findings are consistent with structural dysfunction in this region. And it's good to also remember that focal slowing is suggestive of white matter dysfunction. And epileptiform activity is suggestive of gray matter dysfunction. I, don't, I do write that in my reports at times, but it just depends on your audience. Um, someone who's not a neurologist isn't, doesn't really care about white matter versus gray matter. So sometimes it's better just to say focal cerebral dysfunction in that region with focal slowing. And I always say no epileptiform activity and no electrographic seizures were seen during this recording.